Hello, welcome to the lecture number 24 of the course quantum mechanics and molecular spectroscopy. Okay. Now, uh, in the several classes we were looking at the transition moment integral and its uh, relation to other quantities such as Einstein's A coefficient, B coefficient and the uh, absorption spectrum through Pierre Lambert law. But from now onwards I am going to take a slightly different turn okay, and try to get to the selection rules. Okay. Now, if you go back quite a few classes, okay, then we came across this uh, equation which I will write it down as probability of transition P of t to f state f is given by E naught square divided by 4 h bar square omega f i by omega square okay, sin square delta omega by 2 into t divided by delta omega by 2 square modulus of f mu dot e i and we remember we called it as transition moment integral. Okay. Now, it turns out that P f of t is proportional to your transition moment integral square. So, what are you doing here? You are going from a state i to state f. Okay? And we also related all this to you know, Einstein's A coefficient, Einstein B coefficient and uh, the extinction coefficient through Beer Lambert law. We also looked at the line shapes. Okay? All these experimental quantities could be, could be related to this. Now, it turns out that if I slightly rewrite, so in the vicinity vicinity of omega f i, okay, that means what I am doing is omega f i is approximately equal to omega. That means you will have a transition only when there is a resonance. Okay. So, in that uh, scenario one can rewrite this equation P f of t. So, when you have omega f i is equal to omega I can ignore this term. So, I will get this will be equal to E naught square by 4 h bar square sin of delta omega by 2 into t divided by delta omega by 2 square into f mu dot epsilon i square. Okay. Now, we know this function is the is the line shape. Okay. It determines the line shape. Okay. Now, what we have of course, all these are non-zeros. So, the selection will be allowed or not is given by this integral. Okay. So, one can write transition moment integral TMI is equal to F mu dot epsilon i. Okay. This is my transition moment integral and whether the transition from 1 to 2 or F to i will be allowed or not will depend on this integral. If this integral is 0, the transition is forbidden. If this is, if this is 0, then it is forbidden. this is not equal to 0, then you have allowed. I 
and 0 not equal to 0 they combine what is known as selection rules. Okay. Now, now what we will do in this lecture is to look at this operator mu. What? Okay. Now, let us think of okay, a molecule AB. Okay. So, the two atoms A and B are combined okay. and A and B because they are not the same. So, there will be say let us say delta plus and delta minus. So, you have a dipole. And if the distance equilibrium distances are not. So, for example, if you have a uh, AB molecule one can draw a potential energy surface like this. that is the zero of energy and the distance goes to infinity as m dot degree. Okay. Now, what I am trying to do is that of course, if you go from here to say, say here, there is a huge change in the geometry or the, uh, or the, uh, the bond distance that it spans. So, one can always think that the moments are not. So, one is looking at around the equilibrium position. If you look at around around the equilibrium geometry. One can write mu as a Taylor series expansion. Okay. So, what I will write mu is equal to mu naught plus d mu by dr evaluated r naught into r plus d mu d square mu by dr square evaluated r naught into r square plus d mu d cube mu by dr cube evaluate at a uh, evaluate it at R naught into R cube plus etcetera, etcetera. Okay. One can write a Taylor series. Now, let us look at it in a slightly more useful way. So, the, the dipole moment mu is a Taylor series expansion, some fixed constants plus T mu by dr at r naught multiplied by r plus sorry 1 over 2 factorial d square mu by dr square r naught to r square plus 1 over 3 factorial d square mu by d r cube validated r naught plus r cube plus etcetera. So, this is how I can write my mu as a Taylor series expansion around the equilibrium geometry and this mu naught is the permanent dipole. And what is d mu by d r? How the dipole moment changes with respect to r? Okay, it is the first derivative and you have second derivative. So, one can write it as mu is equal to mu naught plus alpha dot r plus 1 over 2 beta r square plus 1 over 6 gamma r cube etcetera, etcetera, where alpha equals to, where alpha equals to 
d mu by dr evaluated or not beta is nothing but d square mu by dr square evaluated or not and gamma equals to d square actually one could uh, take even the constants into the so when i if i write this as half then i can delete this and if i delete this then one can write 1 over 6 d square mu by d r cube okay so one can write such equation so this is your permanent dipole this is a first derivative of mu this is second derivative coefficient and the third derivative coefficients okay so this is how one can write in terms of taylor series expansion so therefore your tmi around the equilibrium geometry is given by f times mu naught plus alpha dot r plus beta r square plus gamma r cube plus etc etc so this is the transition moment that we need to evaluate okay when i say dipole moment it's basically linear combination of permanent dipole moment and its derivative at various levels of various degrees with respect to r okay so this is the transition moment integral that i need to consider so one can write therefore one can write t m i is equal to f mu naught plus alpha r plus beta r cube plus gamma a beta r square plus gamma r cube beta r square plus gamma r cube plus so that is the transition moment integral I am interested in ok. Now let us look at this equations phi n ok. So what are my solutions? So what are my solutions? I said h naught into i is equal to e i e i i and h naught into f is equal to e f ok. What are my uh, h naught? H naught is the Hamiltonian that for which I know the solutions. So e and e f are the eigenvalues of the functions eigenfunctions i and f ok. Now what is h naught? That is the thinking that we have to figure out ok. To in this course from up till now we have never bothered what is the h naught h naught we just assume is some Hamiltonian for which we know the solutions and once we know the solutions we can evaluate the uh, transition moment integral and that transition moment integral can be related to various experimentally measurable quantities. But right now we have not even thought about what the h naught could be. Now if you write the entire molecular Hamiltonian which I am going to write so h molecules ok. So h naught molecule is nothing but minus h bar square by 2 sum over alpha del square alpha by m alpha that is the kinetic energy of the nuclei where alpha is its index minus h bar square by 2 m e sigma over i del square i. So i is the index on the electron so the kinetic energy of all the electrons minus attraction between the nucleus and all the electrons. So this will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught sum over alpha sum over i z alpha e square by 
r alpha i. So, that is the distance between the electron and the nucleus. Then you have a nuclear nuclear repulsion. So, that is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught sum over alpha sum over beta greater than alpha z alpha z beta e square by r alpha beta that is the nuclear repulsion because alpha and beta are two nucleus and you do not want to count the um, repulsion between the nuclei, same nucleus that is why alpha is not equal to beta and then you have to have only one in one if alpha is uh, if nucleus 1 is repelling 2 nucleus 2. So, it is same as rep nucleus 2 repelling uh, nucleus 1. So, it is so to make sure that you do not repeat the terms you use this kind of notation plus similarly with electron 4 pi epsilon naught sum over i sum over j greater than i e square by r i j. So, we have 5 terms. So, this is Ke of nucleus, Ke of nuclei, this is Ke of electrons, this is nothing but Pe of electrons and nucleus that is attraction this is what P e of nucleus to nucleus that is repulsion and this is nothing but your P e of e that is nothing but electron electron repulsion. H naught okay, of molecule multiplied by psi now which is a function of electrons and nucleus okay, should be equal to E n psi which is function of electrons and nucleus. Okay. Now, it turns out that this is not a possible solution. So, what we do is what we use something called Born Oppenheimer approximation. Okay. This approximation says that the total wave function psi of electrons and nucleus can be separated as chi of nucleus and phi of electrons parametrically dependent on nuclei. And the total Hamiltonian H naught can be written as H nuclei this H Okay. Now, it turns out that when I look at H nu nucleus, okay, the H nucleus even though uh, is this H nucleus the total energy is equal to H nucleus chi nucleus okay, uh, will give you E nucleus chi nucleus. But the total energy E is nothing but E uh, n plus E electron. But you see the phi V. So, now if you have H electron acting on phi electron and that is parametrically dependent on nucleus. What does parametrically depend on nucleus means for every different nuclear position the Hamiltonian of the electrons will be different give a different solution. So, that will nothing but E E plus phi. So, this E e also depends on nucleus because the wave function itself. So, if you take the total energy or the nuclear energy, nuclear energy is just not the repulsion, but it also kind of has the electronic component into it and that is called potential energy. Okay. So, E e, so when you have P e that is nothing but you have E in electron nucleus plus E electron. Okay. So, what you do is you can draw a make a potential energy surface okay that's e so that depends on how the electrons and the nuclei are arranged as a function of distance okay
Now, okay. now one of the issues that we have is the following. So, when you have total wave function, okay, which is then the total wave function psi of e comma n is nothing but chi of n into phi of e and parametrically depend on n. Okay. Now, this is my uh, total solution okay. and of course, it will have its own quantum numbers. So, what I am looking at is the following. Okay. I am starting from a final function f. Now, this f function okay, could be written as the following. Uh, chi nucleus phi electron nucleus some quant all of this having some quantum number let us say a b c or i'll call it as a prime b prime c prime i'll come to what these are okay and this multiplied by your mu dot e multiplied by function i which will i will call it as chi n phi e to the n having quantum numbers a, b, c. Okay. So, what I am trying to do here, I am going from a single wave function, initial wave function which will have quantum number a, b, c and this quantum number could involve uh, the nuclear quantum numbers or quantum numbers related to the nuclear motion and the quantum numbers related to the electronic motion and with some values a, b, c and I am going from there and changing my quantum numbers to a prime, b prime, c prime. Okay. Now, what I am trying to do is the following, I am going from one set of electronic and nuclear coordinates to a different set of electronic and nuclear coordinates and this transition is brought about by this operator. So, now we can think of it this way. So, this operator is really complicated in some sense is that um, chi n phi n e to n whole thing of a prime b prime c prime mu naught plus r plus beta r square plus gamma r cube all by chi n to phi e n whole thing of a b c. So, I am looking at such a transient moment integral. Okay. So, when I take the total wave function. Okay. So, this is how we are uh, going to look at this transient moment integral, but of course, the way it is written, it is almost impossible to solve. So, we have to make uh, right approximations to be able to solve this transient moment integral, uh, evaluate the transient moment integral and look at the selection rules, which we will continue in the next lecture. Thank you. Thank you.